User defaults is great for storing simple settings such as integers and booleans. When it comes to complex data, custom Swift types for example, we need to do a little more work. Here's a simple user data structure we can work with. Struct user, var first name, string, var last name, string. That has two strings, but they aren't special. A string is just a piece of text. The same goes for integer, which is just plain old numbers. Or boolean, true or false. Or double, plain old numbers, just with a dot somewhere in there. Even arrays and dictionaries of those values are easy to think about. There's one string, then another string, then a third, and so on. When working with data like this, Swift gives us a fantastic protocol called Codable, a protocol specifically for archiving and unarchiving data, which is a fancy way of saying converting objects into plain text and back again. We're going to be looking at Codable much more in future projects, but for now our needs are simple. We want to archive a custom type so we can put it into user defaults, then unarchive it when it comes back out of user defaults. When working with a type that only has simple properties, strings, integers, booleans, arrays of strings, and so on, the only thing we have to do to support archiving and unarchiving is add a conformance to Codable, like this. Swift will automatically generate some code for us that will archive and unarchive a user instance for us as needed. But we still need to tell Swift when to archive and what to do with the data. This part of the process is powered by a new type called JSON encoder. Its job is to take something that conforms to Codable and send back that object in JavaScript object notation, JSON. Yes, the name implies it's specific to JavaScript, but in practice we all use it because it's so fast and simple. The Codable protocol doesn't require that we use JSON, and in fact other formats are available, but it is by far the most common. In this instance, we don't actually care what sort of data is used because it's just going to be stored in user defaults. To convert our user data into JSON data, we need to call the encode method on a JSON encoder. This might throw errors, so it should be called with try or try question mark to handle errors neatly. For example, if we had a property to store a user instance like this, at state private var user equals user first name Taylor, last name Swift, then we could create a button that archives the user and saves the user defaults like this. Button, save user, let encoder equals JSON encoder. If let data equals try question mark encoder dot encode self dot user. And then user defaults dot standard dot set data for key user data. That data constant is a new data type called, perhaps confusingly, data. It's designed to store any kind of data you can think of, such as strings, images, zip files, and more. Here though, all we care about is that it's one of the types of data we can write straight into user defaults. When we're coming back the other way, i.e. when we have JSON data and we want to convert that to Swift codable types, we should use JSON decoder rather than JSON encoder. But the process is much the same. That brings us to the end of our project overview, so go ahead and reset your project to its initial state, ready to build on.